our second preview show of the week where BBC Radio Silence Chris Temple is back alongside me. We'll be looking ahead to Sunday's game against Leicester, but we've also got plenty coming up. We'll start back at yesterday and that 0-0 draw with Spurs, before we then turn our attention to Sunday and that game at Vitality Stadium. Well, let's rewind the clock 24 hours and go back to yesterday's game at Vitality Stadium. Chris, it was a, a 0-0 draw with Spurs and certainly a, a much improved performance yet again. Plenty to talk about, wasn't there? Goodness me. Um, yeah, I mean, let's start right at the end, all the drama um, where it could have gone one way or the other right at the end. I mean, Harry Wilson's chance, obviously, is the one that people will look at because the VAR interventions of the uh, the Callum Wilson goal were, was obviously correct. But Harry Wilson coming on as a sub, um, taking that chance, it could have been so different right at the end. And of course, you know, the Callum Wilson goal in inverted commas, um, as anyone who's probably watched the AFCB TV highlights will have gathered. I mean, as a commentator, you have to commentate on what's happening in front of you at the time. And I called that as a last minute winner because we had no angle at all to see that there was a handball in real time. But of course, as soon as you see that, uh, the replay, your heart sinks and everything sinks. And Willow, I think, was ready just to throw his microphone on the floor um, after that because uh, as soon as you saw it back, you realised that that goal wasn't going to stand. So, yeah, those are the, the small breaks. Of course, when we look back earlier in the game, Tottenham should have had a penalty at the Premier League say anyway I mean it's still it's not clear cut but I think you know if you were if that was the other way around you'd be you'd be asking for a penalty there um Joshua King felt he was slightly impeded and sort of fell into Harry Kane but um the Premier League obviously have come out and said there was a, a multitude of VAR mistakes on Thursday night so maybe that little break went Bournemouth's way but overall I think yeah again we spoke about the performances getting incrementally better and the Manchester United performance was better again and last night was the best performance of restart by a long way. Um, all of the fight and desire and heart and press and energy and everything that was, uh, has been missing sort of sporadically over the last few weeks was there. Um, and Tottenham, good side, but not firing on all cylinders at the moment, of course. Some high-quality players. They had to throw on Son at half-time, which uh, you know tells you what they thought of how the game was going. So um, I thought it was yeah, an excellent performance, just short of that final product. And plenty of attacking intent, intent there, as you say. But at the other end, a, a clean sheet as well and, and a very solid performance from the back four. Yeah, I saw a stat tweeted uh, last night after the game. That's the first time in 186 games in the Premier League for Bournemouth they've ever restricted a team to no shots on target. So, you know, when you consider the, the attacking prowess that Spurs had on the pitch there and, you know, throwing on their 60-odd million pound man and Don Belay and Harry Kane obviously played the full 90 and was largely shackled. Uh, having to come very deep to get the ball. So, you know, what a what a credit to, again, Lloyd Kelly. We talk about Lloyd Kelly and Nathan Ake, um, the centre-half pairing. And, and to be fair, the whole defensive unit, I thought Diego Rico got some very important blocks in. Um, Jack Stacey obviously came on and was thrown into the fire a little bit because Spurs were having a good spell at that time after that horrible um, situation with Adam Smith as well. So, yeah, defensively, I thought, you know, Lloyd Kelly looks like he's played 50, 100 games. I think the expectation levels are already starting to rise with... His performances so far, he's slotted in so well. And Nathan Ake, as we mentioned the other day, has seamlessly slipped over to the right-hand side on his on his non-natural side, if you like, for a centre-half. He's gradually worked his way from left-back when he was at Watford uh, to left centre-back, and now he's at right centre-back. So he's, he'll end up at right-back at some point soon, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, all in all, to keep a clean sheet against, uh, against that team. And for Aaron Ramsdale as well, we should mention him. He didn't actually have anything to do, really. Um, it was a worrying moment when he started to clutch his hamstring late in the game, but uh, hopefully he's okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, you think of having let in nine in the last two games and, and sort of faced a multitude of shots. Um, didn't have anything to do, which is just how you like it. Um, so all in all, for the defensive unit and the team, um, it, was a, it was a massive clean sheet and hopefully a big psychological boost. And someone I want to mention as well is Dan Gosling. He came into the team's first start since Project Restart. What did you make of him? I thought he was excellent. I thought his energy was, you know, infectious. He just gets around the pitch. He's everywhere. And it was a real big physical effort last night as well. And we'll come on to that a bit later in terms of the turnaround to the Leicester game. But uh, I thought, yeah, it was a huge, a huge shift from, from Dan Gosling. Um, we've been talking about, I've talked for the last couple of preview shows, <coughs> excuse me, um, that it would be, you know, he, he's got the characteristics you'd want in that team when they're, um, the, the down in the dumps a little bit, someone to lift it, lift the energy, lift everything, show a bit of fight. And I thought he did all of that last night. Um, he hasn't been fit. Eddie actually said this morning that he's, he's missed up probably three weeks of training, um, which is probably more than we realised. So I think they wanted to get him into the team, realised that last night was the one. I hope he can sort of turn around and go again against Leicester because they certainly do need him. I thought Callum Wilson, you know, showed the, the sort of shift again of a guy who's been frustrated to sit out the last two games. 
um, freshened up, if you like, or sharpened up, whichever one you want to call it. I thought he put a real shift in. Joshua King had a, had a better game in terms of the, the home performances we've seen him. It was, still took him a little while to get into it, but I thought he, he showed some, you know, some good moments as well. To be fair, you could probably pick out most people and say that they, they contributed. Um, again, the only one that's, that's still just finding it tough is, is David Brooks, who you know, won one or two fleeting moments, but again, had to come off, didn't manage to last the 90 minutes, but it does appear that was only cramp. So uh, again, hopefully he, he's getting stronger, but he does seem to be sort of uh, hitting the wall, if you like, at the same stage of every game at the moment. But yeah, um, to answer your question, I thought Gosling was, was superb. As you, as you just said, we've got a quick turnaround ahead of the game against Leicester on Sunday. Such a, a strong performance last night. That, that can really help carry over the momentum in, in such a quick number of days until the next game. Yeah, it's a hard balancing act now between recovery and preparation for the, uh, the next game. Up, they won't do too much physical work, if any, uh, I wouldn't expect between now and that Leicester game because they're, they're all back in today. Uh, they've been training Friday. Uh, and then obviously Saturday, they, uh, they'll probably do some set plays or something. I'm not sure exactly what the schedule is. But uh, yeah, it's a case of rest and recovery as much as they can. And, and mentally, because there's a lot of mental concentration went into that uh, performance last night as well. Because again, you give Harry Kane an inch, you give some of these players an inch, they will take it. Um, so yeah, I think physically it's going to be a, a big ask to go again so quickly. Um, but hopefully they are recovering. And as you say, Callum hasn't played for a couple of weeks or you know a week or so. So he's... Um, hopefully fresh the likes of Dan Gosling are the ones who haven't played many minutes so you just hope they can be fit to go again Jefferson Lerma I mean I haven't mentioned but again he was popping up everywhere as a, a bit of a nuisance yesterday as well so the, the only one we know that won't be available will be Adam Smith after that pretty horrible looking clash. Absolutely well that game against Leicester is one we're going to preview next and Eddie Howe has been talking about it in this morning's pre-match press conference. Um, so who have we got we've got uh, Adam Smith will miss, will miss the Leicester game for sure with um with the injury that he suffered last night. Uh, we've got a few bumps and bruises from the game, obviously. David Brooks came off. We yeah. think that was just cramp, but we'll wait and see today to find out more. Steve Cook's had a hamstring problem. That's still not 100%, even though he was on the bench yesterday. The physical effort, the heart endeavour showed, the, the quality we showed at times as well. So I think there was that, that will give the players a huge lift, no doubt. Yes, we want another good performance, um, but we want to turn those, you know, that, that building of momentum into, into goals and, and obviously into wins. I was really, really you know, proud of the players, pleased with the players. Um, a lot's been chucked at us. A lot of questions have been asked. And the only, way, only place you can respond, I keep saying it, but is on the pitch. And I felt we did in the right way. So you have to believe that you're good enough to keep clean sheets. We haven't kept enough of them this season. I think that was a huge step in the right direction. As you say, it wasn't just the way, sorry, the, the fact we did it, it's the way we did it. We limited some of the best attacking players in the country to, to minimal goal mouth action. So I think that's going to be my message again to the players that we're going to need to function as we did well against Tottenham. Um, we're going to need to back that up with another performance. Well, that was Eddie Howe previewing the game against Leicester on Sunday. Chris, the, they seem to be building and building with each game and more minutes in their system. Could this finally be the one where they get the three points? I think it needs to be. I think um, a lot depends on what happens on Saturday as to the, what pressure is put on the the Leicester game, to be honest with you, because the game's going on elsewhere. All three of the Cherries' direct relegation rivals have got winnable games um, coming up on Saturday before Bournemouth play, if at Villa play on Sunday. But uh, in terms of uh, the other teams on Saturday, West Ham go to Norwich, Watford are at home to Newcastle on Saturday lunchtime, and then Aston Villa play Palace. So all of those three teams, all at home, uh, sorry, apart from West Ham, the other two are at home. So you'd be looking at, you know, probably a couple of those might win. Um, which is going to put the heat on the Leicester game. Um, if none of them get a win, then you'd say, OK, a draw against Leicester and just keep you know, trimming that gap or keep the gap at three. Then it, obviously it keeps it still alive. But if suddenly if those teams win and the gap goes to six and then Bournemouth don't win against Leicester or, or get a draw, then that gap, five points with three games remaining. I'm sorry, that's looking, that's looking a long way off. Um, so I think what happens on Saturday really does dictate what needs to happen on Sunday. But... We did say probably need to win at least one of these games and get probably four points from the six. They've got one of those those points. So I think three against Leicester, um, you know, is going to be very important given that it's Manchester City next and you wouldn't be uh, putting too much money on Bournemouth going there and getting too much. So, yeah, there's a, there's a bit of pressure on the game, but 
I suppose, you know, that, that pressure is offset by Bournemouth actually having performed now as well, because the pressure has come before from not only what was needed from the games, but also the fact that Bournemouth hadn't, hadn't performed at all. So you're putting pressure on yourselves through your poor performances, as well as the external pressure of needing to get points, if you like, in the table. So I think it sent a bit of a message to the other teams last night as well, um, to say, hang on, Bournemouth aren't out of this. They have got some fight left. And those, the games against you know, Wolves was OK in, in chunks. Manchester United was quite good in chunks, lost 5-2. And then Spurs was sort of the, the most complete performance of all. So those performances are going in the right direction, all against the bigger teams, of course, because they played so poorly against the teams in the games that they would be expected to win. So I'm hoping that that sort of uh, that expectation where people would say, well, Leicester are chasing the Champions League, so Bournemouth, you know, effectively are second favourites in this game, which they will be, um, that, that lightens the load a little bit. So yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's an interesting weekend and probably the, the most important weekend for looking at other results, I think, as well, because it would be lovely, a bit like West Ham slipping up at home to Burnley, you know, on paper you'd have that down as a West Ham win with them having beaten Chelsea at home. So it would be lovely if the form book could be, or the, the, the bookies odds, if you like, could be turned on its head with a couple of those other games on Saturday. And in terms of Leicester, again, very similar to Spurs, their results, they've had a mixed bag since, since the restart. What have you made of them? What you've seen of them? Yeah, I mean, first of all, they've had a brilliant season to be right in the Champions League uh, shake-up. They just got obviously overtaken by Chelsea as a result of their last couple of results with Chelsea winning and, uh, and Leicester drawing at Arsenal. But yeah, brilliant brilliant season under Brendan Rodgers. Vardy, what a season he's had. Uh, it doesn't seem to, you know, his age doesn't seem to be any sort of factor at all. He's got 22 goals. He's top of the pile ahead of a lot of uh, world-class strikers. So, unfortunately, from England's point of view, of course, he's, he's decided to retire, but then maybe he's not quite Gareth Southgate's target age. But, yeah, he'll be an absolute threat. He always seems to be when he plays against Bournemouth. Um, yeah, they have had a mixed bag, as you say, since they've come back. They've only won once, actually, uh, since they've come back from, from restart. A couple of sticky little draws when they were uh, looking to get going against Watford, of course. They got pegged back in the last minute. And Brighton, uh, a pretty poor home goalless draw as well. Um, the Arsenal-Leicester game in, earlier on in, in the week was actually one of the better, better entertainment uh, packages, if you like, of the games we've seen so far. A good 1-1 draw between two teams chasing Europe. So, yeah, away from home, I'm hoping that they continue their inconsistency and uh, haven't quite managed to fire on all cylinders so far. They've obviously had Madison was injured for that game. Um, it would be good if he was... I haven't heard the team news from Leicester, Leicester's end yet, but it would be nice if someone of his ability wasn't available to come to Bournemouth, for sure. And when we look back earlier in the season at the game up there, you know, Vardy scored early, Callum Wilson equalised pretty quickly. We had the Tielemans uh, challenge on Callum Wilson where VAR again was uh, popped out for a coffee or something at that moment. Um, and it was, you know, a, a day in the end that was comfortable for Leicester. So, yeah, I think Bournemouth and Leicester have always had interesting sort of uh, ding-dong battles. There was a, what was it, a 4-2, I think, last season, possibly. I missed the game. But, um, yeah, so competitive game coming up. But, again, as I say, definitely need a point. Probably need three, bearing in mind that the teams on, on Saturday will probably win. And in terms of our team news, Eddie Howe has just said in his, his press conference that Adam Smith won't make it. He's hopeful for David Brooks, which, again, is encouraging if we can get more minutes in, in him. Yeah, um, it, again, two games in the space of four days, or going again, I guess, 72 hours after the, the previous game. They've obviously got till Sunday night to, to recover in inverted commas. But yeah, th that might be a tall order for David Brooks. I actually wouldn't be surprised to see a change made there. I wouldn't be surprised to see Harry Wilson possibly come in on that on that right-hand side um, because David Brooks, if he is struggling, then to, to throw him out there again, given that, I mean, if he was sort of irreplaceable on current form, you'd say maybe throw him out there again because there's no point resting him for games that are coming up because there's only three more. Um, but his form hasn't shown so far that he's someone you, you wouldn't be too worried about leaving out. So I wonder if, you know, Harry Wilson came on and he got himself in a couple of good positions. He hasn't been consistent, um, you know, probably all season actually, but hasn't been that consistent since he's had minutes back in the, uh, off the bench in this restart period. So possibly a change there. Um, obviously, Adam Smith will be out, as you say, so Jack Stacey will, will come in. The good news for Adam Smith is that, thankfully, it doesn't seem to be too serious, but with sort of concussion protocols and, and uh, player care these days, he obviously won't be available. And you know, the way he was stretched off, it looked, it looked pretty nasty. So that's good news in, in some respects from Adam Smith's side of things. Uh, and then apart from that, in the, the rest of the team, I, I can't see any other changes, really. I mean, Gosling and Lerma, you know, looked a much better uh, central midfield partnership. Steve Cook wasn't fully fit. He was on the bench as an emergency against Spurs. So he's unlikely, I don't think, to be you know, back to full fitness in the space of three days for, for Leicester, particularly with a hamstring, which is a, a bit risky. Um, and also, you know, you couldn't really separate Lloyd Kelly and Nathan Ake after they've just kept a clean sheet. So, um, yeah, all in all, I think probably minimal changes if they're all physically able to go again. 
um, with maybe Harry Wilson for Brooks possibly the, the only change. And just finally, in terms of Leicester, you mentioned Jamie, Jamie Vardy a little bit earlier. He's certainly going to be the one to watch, isn't he? You know, chasing that golden boot, he's going to be wanting to fire in those goals. Yeah, and he's another one who doesn't need too many uh, invitations to, to take opportunities. You know, if you, you give him a sniff, you give him a bit of space, his, his pace running in behind, he seems to have got quicker, if anything, I think, over the, uh, the last couple of years, rather than going the other way and starting to lose a yard of pace. So it's another different challenge for, you know, for, for Kelly and Ake as a, a sort of a fledgling partnership. If you like Harry Kane, you know, Eddie was talking in his press conference, the thing about defending Harry Kane is that it's, it's all about concentration, because in you know, a split second, you can lose him all of a sudden. So... With the two tests that, I say come through, I mean, obviously they conceded five against Manchester United, but, you know, Lloyd Kelly stood up very well against, you know, Rashford, Martial, Greenwood, Fernandez, the rest, um, for his for his centre-half Premier League debut, if you like. He's kept a clean sheet against Kane and restricted them to no shots on target. So, yeah, another, another sort of uh, notch, I guess, in the education of Lloyd Kelly, but nothing to suggest so far that he's not up to the task and of course expectation levels they do rise very quickly when someone comes along and shows a bit of ability and of course I saw people cursing Harry Arter for the challenge that of course put Lloyd Kelly out for most of the season saying if Harry Arter hadn't put that tackle in in pre-season then uh, you know things might have been a little bit different with Lloyd Kelly in the team but that's uh, uh, I think clutching at some straws. Uh, quite possibly well that is all we've got time for today if you are around on Sunday, you can listen on AFCB TV to Chris and Willow for full live commentary. We'll be back next Tuesday to preview that game at Manchester City. Bye for now.